thank you as for uh, thank you HSS for inviting me here to to speak on behalf of of the I or the Shark Sailor Federation. Uh, it's it's really an honor. Um, the the boat that you can see here, uh, as the title says, is is my boat or our boat. Uh, the the guy trimming the the front sail, as of Humanisto is the other owner of it, uh, and. Uh, I think, as Esco mentioned, uh, the high boat uh, is something that most of the sailors uh, in Finland have either sailed or, or have connections to, so there are probably ten times more I experience in this room than, than I have, but nevertheless, uh, I, I bought my first uh, high boat uh, in 2007 from Hanko. And, and, and sailed, it, sailed it to Espo and, and started competing immediately with it. My, my purpose was to, to learn how to sail it, uh, but as soon as I, I got it to Espo and, and, and Johan Porsche heard that, that there's a new boat in, in Helsinki, he told me that I have to participate in the Helsinki regatta and he has the, the crew for me. So, so I, I learned it the, the best way, I guess, uh, by going to a competition instead of uh, sailing by myself for two to three years and, and thinking that maybe now I can start competing. The, this, this boat, Muskulintu, uh, we bought uh, Vesa and myself uh, and, and another third guy, Mika, uh, three years ago uh, from from Kopu, Koivusaaren Pursi Seura, and, and it's, it's really a, a special boat, as, as everyone who owns a, a classic yacht thinks their boat is very special. Uh, the, the specialty for, for Mörskulintu is that, that it's been built uh, by Jorma Seppälä in, in 1969 uh, for himself, so, so it's, it's really a, a master's masterpiece done, done for himself, so all the materials are very carefully chosen, and it has been get, kept in, in an excellent shape. So, so when we put it in the water, uh, there's no water coming in, which is often not very usual for high boats or, or any other classic boats, as you know. So, so it's not a very old boat. Uh, it's younger than me, actually, five years, uh, but, but a, a terrific boat, and, and uh, we, we love sailing it, and we love the high class. So going on, and, and before going on, I, I would like to mention that uh, there are some uh, leaflets there and, and also at the Mahogany Yacht Society uh, department in, in the fair here, there is uh, a high boat uh, presented uh, in, in full rigging. Uh, it's a boat called Hermans, uh, built in 1952, and, and it's the, the champion of the high class uh, of 2012 and 2013. So. So if you want to see a, a really competitive uh, boat, uh, it's rigging, uh, you should go and look at Hermans and, and, and not our boat, because we are on our way learning how to be a, a great team. Okay, so going forward this way. Yeah. Okay, so so I'd like to talk about a little bit about the history of the high, which which many of you know know much more about than myself. But but the basic uh, things and and when was it when was it designed and, and what was the reason for it and the ideology behind it uh, and then uh, some of the, the measures and materials and, and special characteristics maybe to the the high bolt and then a little bit about the class, its activity, and, and, and then at the end uh, present the, the calendar of the high ranking and, and the 2014 nationals, which uh, this year will be held in Helsinki uh, for a long time, and HSS is, is hosting it, and then it will be sailed <coughs> hopefully, as, as I have heard, uh, right uh, behind the, the skipper home and where the, the rocks have been blown out and, and then there should be room for a, a course for, for the high boat. And, and as you may know, there are other nationals at that same weekend and the Champagne Dragat. But... Okay, so, so HSS has a very significant part in, in the birth of the high boat. It was uh, <laughs> uh, ordered by Eric Nommelin, the then Commodore of HSS and, and some other 
people from uh, the designer Gunnar Stenbeck, uh, who was a age bolt and yacht designer, uh, spent his early career, I think, in, in the US designing bolts, and then, then came back to Finland and, and represented the Orville bolt fire, uh, for instance, and, and is behind the design of, of many of the, the meter bolts as well. Uh, for instance, uh, I think Naya, the, the pin number one, the six meter bolt, is designed by Gunnar L. Stenbeck. Uh, it was designed in 1930 and, and presented in, in what's called uh, Guard in Manes, your guard's riding ring, I guess, in English, uh, in 1931 in, in a special, special fair, bolt fair. Uh, and, and it was presented in the Frisk Priest magazine, uh, number nine of, of 1930. And you can see the, the card in Mane, see the picture on the right. I, I, I wanted to put it there, of course, because that's where it was presented. And, and many of us know the place. It's in Kasarnikatu in, in downtown Helsinki. And that's, that's where they had the boat fair. And, and uh, interestingly enough, I, I found that the place is for sale at the moment. So, so I don't know have a, a, a place to, to keep your boats or build them. I think a, a, a boat builder should buy that place. Uh, okay, um, the high was approved as a one-type class in, in 1932 by the, the Finnish Yachting Federation or, uh, and, and the High Sailors Federation or High Borehtiat uh, was, was founded in 1963 and, and ever since uh, next season uh, the nationals have been held every year uh, with i think looking at the statistics a few years uh, there were a bit less than than 20 boats which is basically the to have the title you have to have a minimum of 20 boats but, but at some some years there were i don't know if there were boats that didn't didn't make it or, or why but but most years the nationals have been held and then 1965 was the, the year of most of the boats, so not, not 64, but 65. There were 52 high boats on the line for the, for the champions, which is, is something we, of course, would like to see even today. But, uh, before going forward, I, I had a, go forward. <laughs> a question here that I, I wanted to, to ask. So, so. Is there, and if so, what is the connection between Sharkbolt and Microsoft? So that's just a quiz that, that you can think about. Yeah. Okay, so so there has been almost 300 uh, high bolts built in Finland. The latest one in 2003 called uh, Aquarel in, in Pietarsaario, Jakobstad, uh, with the a fairly modern way of building it. Uh, uh, there have also been a lot more than, than 300 uh, shark boats built uh, elsewhere or, or around the world. For instance, there were 25 ordered by the Camden Yacht Club in Maine uh, in, in the early 30s, and, and uh, so I think 15 were ordered in, in 33 or so, and then a storm uh, destroyed some of them, so another 10 was ordered later. And, and the shark boat has been, or, or was at some point of time, used as a training uh, yacht by the French Navy. So, so they ordered, I think there were about 100 sharks built uh, to, to take to France. And, and it's, it's a fairly active class still. There are, are a lot of high boats or hands, as, as they are called there. It, they're not quite... Uh, according to the specifications that we have made, they can have a, an aluminum mast and, and a bigger sail area and, and some changes to the original drawings. Uh, there has been some built in Estonia, I do not know how many, but, but uh, some, and, and in 1939 there were 22 boats in Germany, and there still are some left, I, I know that for sure. And uh, this is something I'm, I'm not, completely 100% sure about, but, but what I have heard is that, that there was a plan uh, 
to break through the high both internationally in the in the Olympics in Helsinki in 1940, which which then of course uh, were postponed due to to some other things to do, uh, and and when the Olympics were held here in '52, it was already too late for the high ball to break through. So maybe we would have seen a a, a real international class if, if the war would not have happened. So here's just about the Camden uh, Yacht Club. It, it was so interesting that I, I took it here. It's, it's in their history. Uh, much of their history on their website is, is donated to telling about the shark boats. So, so it has played a, a significant role, amazingly enough, uh, somewhere like in, in Maine. So just a piece of, of information, interesting, I think. So about the, the, the boat itself, uh, it's a beautiful boat, as, as you, you have seen in the, in the picture and can see here in the drawings, uh, 9.6 meters and, and only 1.9 meters uh, from the widest part. So, so it's very slim and, and nice weighing. Uh, the displacement being 1,700 kilograms and, and as you can see from the bottom, the, the last time uh, the, the national boats participating in the nationals were weighed was in Oulu uh, in 2002 and, and they weighed between 1920 and 2140 kilograms, so, so a couple of hundred kilogram uh, variance in, in the weights of the boats. And, and of course, the draught uh, of 1.1 meters only is, is, is something very special uh, to the high boat. And if you look at the if you look at the keel, uh, you can see the design that that, that it really is designed uh, to to be sailed on the rocky waters. And, and you can really sail and drive fast to a to a rock. I, I know that from, from <laughs> several occasions. <laughs> and it just goes up, and then. Uh, it starts to, to turn and fall, but, but when you loosen the mainsail, it, it kindly uh, slides back and, and then you can continue. That happened to us going to Hanko last year. We, we were racing a Rican, a French high boat, uh, on the way. We saw uh, by mistake or, or just happened to see one, and, and they were immediately racing us. And because it has a little bit larger sail area, it was a really tough contest, but of course we won it at the end, and, and we were so so happy about ourselves that we, we missed a few marks and, and hit, hit the rock really, really hard. And, and I thought that, that we were going, uh, I started to look where to jump and, and so on. But it just came back and when we lifted it up uh, for the winter, there was no sign except some paint gone from the key. So, so it was really interesting. Okay. Uh, so, so the materials, the, the idea behind the high boat uh, or building it was was to make a boat which is cheap to build and easy to build and can be built uh, kind of in a <coughs> factory type production uh, so so some of the ideas uh, were i think uh, taken from from henry ford uh, how, how he built the cars of course there weren't nearly as many built but but the materials are are quite uh, easily available and uh, everything, because it's a one-type class, has to be according to the, the original drawings, except maybe winches, which can be used today. So, so it's a, it was and it, it, it is a fairly cheap uh, boat to build and, and to, to maintain as well. <coughs> So some of the characteristics I mentioned already. So, so very few changes to original specifications. So I think the sail area has been uh, enlarged a little bit uh, at some point of time, and also the usage of winches uh, is possible. Um, Hermans, the, the champion boat, they have winches, which is very rare at high boats, but they also sell eight, they sail eight, eight boats, so maybe they're used to trimming the, the front sail with the winches. Um, all the lines, as you can see a little bit from the picture, come, 
come into the cockpit uh, through cleats or, or cam cleats, so, so it's really easy to, to operate even by yourself. Uh, very easy to sail, sail just by one man or one. Uh, the tail area is, is quite small in relation to, to the broad, so, so there is a saying that, that when when other boats come in, the, the, the sharks go out, so, so you can really set it in, in fairly heavy winds. And, and I think it was uh, in, the, in the last year's symposium when Mr. Hereshoff was here uh, that, that he said that, that, that one design boats are okay, they just have one downside, which is that the boats are all the same, so usually the best sailor wins, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it really is an active class and, and a great, great uh, group of people participating in the, in the high rankings. Uh, more than 20 boats in, in the national championships uh, <laughs> last year in Tampere, before that in Oulu and, and this year in Helsinki. And the ranking series has uh, between 30 to 40 uh, teams or boats competing. Uh, there are nine, nine competitions or regattas ranking series, uh, the Nationals is one of them, and, and what is quite uh, characteristic about uh, the, the top high sailors uh, is that they usually sail, uh, or at least have sailed, many of them still sail other multiple classes like, like of the, the, the age boat and Melkes, uh, the boat star 2.4s and, and so on, and also offshore racing and sailing. Uh, it's a team of three in, in the competition, and, and, and yes, it's, it's really rewarding to try to learn uh, how to compete with a high boat, because there are so many supportive people around sailing, sailing in high boats, and, and also so many people who have an opinion and, and know a lot about high boats, even if they don't compete. So there's Hermans, the, the two-time championship on, on the right-hand side, taken from here when, when they brought it here. And, and there's uh, Mirsch Grintl uh, in, you might not guess, but in the Masto Classic show. That's Mary Haka and the Kalio Church. Behind many people have asked if we have been sailing in London or New York or China or somewhere. No, that's here. <laughs> Okay, then just to, to promote the, the calendar a little bit, uh, so, so there are nine, nine uh, regattas or races uh, where we can participate in, in the high ranking. And, and then there's the team nationals in Nantali, which is not a ranking, uh, ranking contest, but, but hosted by Nantali. They give the votes and, and you just bring your team and you compete against each other in the Host, hosting club. And the nationals here, uh, August 8th to 10th, uh, same time with the, the nationals of the six meter boats, I, I believe, and, and the champagne regatta. So, so really, all, all beginning of August for the HSS teams, I believe. Okay, so I think I pretty much said everything. But I wanted to thank you for listening uh, and and then for the quiz. I don't know how many of you guessed the, the Microsoft uh, High Connection, but there's a, a very popular boot called High Boot, which was designed by Nokia when they still made rubber boots in, in 68 by an architect Esko Lehesma. And, and he was a high sailor, so he named it High. And, and of course, the Microsoft connection comes from Microsoft by Nokia. So there's probably still people that, that work in the boot factory working for Microsoft. Thank you.